and then the motor itself is down uh, underneath the transmission tunnel. Basically, it's got the same the stock transfer case with the high range and low range, and everything from the transfer case to the tires is still stock Toyota. So when I go off road, I just put it down into low range. Uh, yep. Whoa! All right, here with uh, Jimmy Underhill. Hey, How's Jimmy. Going? Good. And uh, he's going to give us a deep dive into the electric Land Cruiser. So where do you want to start? Let's do it. Um, I'll pop the hood and show you off what's going on. And it's charging right now. Little uh, top off. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'll have enough juice to go on the cruise later. So this is basically where the magic happens. In the middle, that's the battery in the box. Uh, this is the charger. The inverter's over there in the corner. And then the motor itself is down uh, underneath the transmission tunnel. Tucked in there? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool. And all the parts came from a Nissan Leaf 2017. So it's got a 30 kilowatt hour battery and um, 80 kilowatt motor. And uh, it's got regular level one, level two charging. And it also has a Chatamo fast charge. It has fast charge? Yeah. I don't, I don't think I realized that. That's yeah. awesome. Have you used that before? Yeah, it works great. Cool. That's not, a Leaf doesn't have two charge ports, does it? Does, it does, yeah. It does. Yeah, under the little <laughs> hatch in the front is just that same thing. Okay, interesting. And so really everything from a leaf, from that Leaf you took out and then repurposed here? Pretty much. Um, I even used the wiring harness. I used the cooling pump. Um, yeah, all the main components, the charger, DC to DC, the inverter, all the main components. Okay. And what about this? Tell us about the battery box. So the battery box I built um, out of steel. So the frame is a steel angle that it's all welded together. And then the panels are aluminum. And you can see there's rivets. I riveted the panels on and there's seam sealer to make it totally waterproof and protect it from all the elements so that I can take it off-roading and go through rivers and not have to worry about it, drive it in all conditions. Awesome. Um, I've got the safety disconnect, the emergency disconnect there. Uh, or if you're working on the battery, you can pull it out um, to make it safe. And it's got little vents in the back, which equalize the pressure. So when I'm going up into the mountains at 12,000 feet or come down to sea level, uh, there's no pressure buildup inside the box. That's awesome. Have you taken it up that high before? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, I went up to Kingston Peak, which is about a little over 12,000 feet. Whew. And I was at the top of the mountain with 18% in the battery. <laughs> and then when I made it all the way back down into town, I was at 30%. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's that regen. Yep. So what's your kind of total rough range with that um, 30 kilowatt pack? If you're just driving normally, about 60 to 70 miles. And if you're uh, off-roading, it's probably around 50 miles. That's pretty good for a big truck like this. Yeah, so it's got like about half the range of the Leaf with the same battery. But it's twice the size, so maybe that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and tons of aerodynamic drag. Like if I take it above uh, 65 miles an hour, then you can just see the battery percentage just like clicking down. <laughs> It sounds like what happens when I take the Tesla to the track. Yeah. You just watch it go down. Yeah. But if you just drive around normally, it, it goes pretty far, so. Winch set up? Yep. And how is that wired in? So the winch is wired into the 12 volt battery. Okay. And that's why I've got the yellow top there, is so that I can, because the winch can draw up like um, 500 or 1000 amps. It can have a big draw if you're under load. And then the DC to DC in the uh, PDM here charges up the 12 volt battery and it runs all the other things, the windshield wipers, the lights. But um, when the truck's on and you can winch, uh, the PDM actually supplies about 2,500 watts of power. So it's more than enough to run the winch and it actually runs better than a gas truck. Awesome. So. Let's talk about the suspension and, and whatnot a little bit. Yeah. Because it's it's a Land Cruiser, right? So how did you how did you hook up the electric motor to 
it looks like the existing drivetrain. Yeah, so the basically it's got the same the stock transfer case with the high range and low range, and everything from the transfer case to the tires is still stock Toyota. So it's tough, it's durable, like it's not going to break on me. Um, the suspension is an OME lift, uh, two inch lift, and it's got a. Uh, I did the like full brake job on it before I built it with braided steel lines, and uh, it's got a rear locker in the rear diff. That you added? Yeah. Cool. This is sweet, man. Got excellent stickers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the uh, catalytic converters were actually stolen from this truck when I first bought it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't as inconvenient as it could have been. Right. <laughs> Morning, Kevin. Morning. Is this the one free? No, but it, it's pretty cheap. Is it? Yeah. It might top off because I might like the racing later. Yeah, I want to do the cruise. Oh, yeah. Can we look at the inside? Sure. Nothing special, it's just an old truck. When I got it, the, all the seats were ripped up and torn and the steering wheel was like falling apart. So I went through a couple pick and pull junkyards and got a good set of seats. Okay. And cleaned it up as best I could. So really you almost wouldn't know that it's electric by looking at it. Yeah, just about there's the park neutral reverse uh, interface there. And that's really the only difference. Where's that? The Where the automatic transmission shifter used to be. Now there's a black panel with the three buttons on ah, it. Ah, right here. Yeah. And so that's how you change it from drive or neutral or reverse. And then you have a battery indicator here, it looks like? Yep. Yeah, it'll show the percentage there, uh, what drive mode you're in, and how much regen. And what uh, what computer is that? Or what? how did you hook that in? It's called the Resolve EV controller. Okay. And it's the VCU that controls all the components from the LEAF. Interesting. There's some additional uh, buttons down here. Yeah. So some of them are going to control some aftermarket lights I haven't put on yet. Okay. There's the knob with the red handle. Yeah. And that locks and unlocks my center diff lock. Uh, so I, I push on that to go off-roading and pull it out for on the street. And then there's a little rocker switch, which is the brake disconnect. Yeah. And the reason I have that is because the way the controller uh, works is you have to have your foot on the brake to change gears um, but you can't two foot uh, drive so if you have your foot on the brake it won't let you use any throttle at all but when you're off-roading sometimes you need to left foot brake yeah um, to, especially if you're on a steep slope and you need to get going you want to have a foot on the brake and then get the throttle app applied and then get off the brake and you can go but just because of the software it won't let you do that for safety yeah so I've got the little switch to disconnect the brake signal so that I can do it all day long. Interesting. Yeah. That's something I noticed uh, again with the Tesla at the track. Mm -hmm. You can't brake boost at all. Yeah. Like if you were wanting to, to put the brake and then brake the tires loose right. with throttle, it, it freaks out. So something like that might fix it. Yeah. And I mean, if you ask Tesla, they're going to say that their software is better than you, but a lot of drivers will two foot drive um, left foot braking. Like when you're going into a corner, you can just kind of breathe. On yeah. that brake pedal to pull the nose down and get into the apex and um, so that's just kind of a quirk that you got to get used to with a mod like a lot of modern cars are like this with all the computer controlled everything yeah interesting someone should tweet elon that that's a good idea for the track mode yeah this is pretty sweet so this is where i can put my camping gear my dog all parts I wanted to do the conversion and maintain all the cargo capacity and not have it uh, intrude, like the batteries intrude into the cabin. And so the battery in the front, that's the only pack? Yeah. Okay, apparently. cool. So everything is kind of nicely contained. Yeah. I guess in the future, I want to add a second battery 
um, underneath here where the gas tank used to be and also all along the side of the vehicle where the exhaust used to be. Yeah. There's tons of space, it's just empty now, but I could fit a lot of batteries there. I think you should do it. Yeah. Cool. So I think we still have some time. Do you want to go for a ride? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let me hop up here and we'll, uh, okay. I want to feel what this is like. Okay, just unplug it here. It's really simple to drive. You just turn the key on and it powers up and we push our drive button here. You can see our percentage. We're in drive. It'll also show neutral and reverse. And then this, these two bars is my regen level. So uh, if I push the drive button up, that's uh, low regen, medium regen, and high regen. Wow. You, I even saw you had a backup camera integrated. Yep. That's sweet, man. Yep. Yeah, the, the head unit and the backup camera. And you somehow fed a reverse signal into the head unit? Uh, yeah, so that's actually kind of the easy part because um, all vehicles, when you put them in reverse, it turns on the tail, the reverse lights. And um, that's like built into the car. So with the Resolve EV controller, I just, there's an output for reverse lights and you just wire that straight into your uh, vehicle wiring okay. and then that's how the signal gets to the head unit and it also lights up on the dash that you're in reverse cool i love that wine <laughs> yeah but it's just what i love is how smooth it is to drive and it's got good to good torque good pickup even though it's only 100 horsepower it still it goes just fine the delivery of it yeah makes it smooth and you can just put your foot down and get up to speed <laughs> an old land cruiser like this it, the transmission would be shifting and the motor would be making all sorts of noises and they're kind of sluggish even when they were new they were underpowered and sluggish so with this motor it's really really fun to drive it's just a pleasure to drive yeah it's peppy man yeah and so we'll this is our full regen it's not quite enough to stop you, like especially going a downhill like this, but um, it makes a big difference. Oh yeah, 18 to 30 percent going down a mountain. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, and that's what I found is elevation change is a huge uh, part of how you have to drive. So you don't have to just think about where, how far you're going, but you have to know: Am I going up? And, in the mountain in the between is there uh, am i going to be higher at the end or lower and that will give you like uh, an indication of how far you can go but i found if you can make it to the top you can usually make it back down again very cool just getting to the top yeah Smoothly accelerates, no shifting. What's the top speed in it? Uh, I've done about 75 miles an hour. And that's kind of like where the gearing runs out. You did some some particular thought into your gearing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that since I'm using the leaf motor, it's a little bit underpowered that it was all gonna be in the gearing. Um, if I didn't get that right, it was gonna be no good. So I think I got it just about right. As far as how it feels, it doesn't feel sluggish. It feels really peppy. If there was a lot more noise, I believe that it was just a regular gas car. Yeah. Yeah, and you can kind of hear the transmission whine through the gearbox, and you can hear my roof rack rattling, and you can hear the suspension moving, but uh, you can't really hear any of that in the gas vehicle because the engine just drowns everything out.
I think that the wine kind of sounds like a spaceship. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> How often do you take this out into the trails? I try to do it as much as possible. Um, I've probably done 10 trails, maybe a few more. Um, there's a local club that I'm part of, the Rising Sun 4x4 Club, and we go, the club goes off roading like once or twice a month year nice. round. And so I try to get this thing out as much as I can. Have but, you taken it out in like snow, rain, any weather? Oh yeah, when it snows I drive it and it does great. Um, because you have such like, good de torque delivery and it's really smooth and responsive there's nothing funny like when an automatic transmission shifts sometimes the tires will break loose or uh, I've taken it on like sand dunes and sometimes if you're going up the, the dune in an automatic truck you're you're accelerating so you're in second or third gear and then as soon as you load up and go up the dune it has to downshift and when it you when that happens you lose momentum but with this truck, when I hit the dune, it just, it's just one gear and it just goes up and over. There's no loss of torque or loss of momentum. That's awesome. What a fun ride. It really is fun. And remember, this is only 80 kilowatts or 100 horsepower. So imagine if it was 200 horsepower, which is just a, as simple as changing the inverter. Have people done that with the Leafs? Yeah, the later model Leafs had a, um, the original one was 100 horsepower, then they introduced 150 horsepower one, and then introduced a 200 horsepower one. And the great part is they all have the same architecture, the same uh, layout, and the wiring is all the same. So you can literally just pull out the old inverter and double your horsepower just like that. Is that on the list for you? Yeah, definitely. Heck yeah. I think I need to do a battery upgrade to support it because um, the older batteries can't support that much current. Uh, so I need to upgrade the battery to do that. Would you have to upgrade both pack, like add a new pack, or could you just add on to the one that you have? Um, I, ideally, I would add on to it, but um, I might have to have just two separate packs. Got so it. we'll see. Right on, and now we're getting back to State of Charge, where we've been hanging out. If you want, I'll put it, I'll go in the parking lot and put it in low range, and you can see when it's uh, in torque monster mode. Sure, yeah, let's do that. So it's just like this uh, standard transfer case, so when I go off-road, I just put it down into low range. Yep. And now, uh... Whoa! Yeah. Big difference. <laughs> yeah, and so that's the gearing. It's all the mechanical advantage of the gearing. So that's kind of like a, it's downright quick. Yeah. With the, uh, in low range. But you only go about 30, 35 miles an hour maximum. That's a huge difference. You can really feel that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I need it. Cause when you're off-roading, you're climbing up su such steep grades that if you don't, have low range, you're not going to be able to make it. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you. No Appreciate problem. Appreciate it, Jimmy. Yeah. All right. Look forward to doing more of this. Yeah, for this sure. This is such a cool build. <laughs>